We all get excited when we have to learn a new language, isn't it? Not only when we speak colloquial languages, but also when it comes to learning programming. There are lots of different languages and we get excited every time you see a new language. Let's see what are the different languages which you can learn in 2018. These are my personal 10 picks. If you have a specific favorite language, do let me know in the comment section below. Let's see whether it matches to what I have put down here. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. The first in my list is Python. Python is a general purpose dynamic language that mostly emphasizes on the code readability. It also enables the developers to use fewer lines of code compared to the C++ or the Java code. It generally supports multiple programming paradigms and also has a large standard library similar to how we have for Java and other JVM specific languages. In general, if you have seen the general community of developers, lots of people love Python compared to the other programming languages because of the object oriented support which is great and also for the shortcuts which are very easy to handle. I am personally interested in learning Python next year. So what do you think? The next one in the list is Java. If you already know, Java has released the latest version of their software with this, the Java 9 and they are going to have the end of life for Java 8 soon. I, I'm pretty sure that most of you are already new to Java 8 and learning these streams and stuff. I have already done some courses and done some videos on Java 8 streams. You can check that out for learning Java 8. And for Java 9, I have just started making Java 9 and I have started learning Java 9 as well because of the new features which Java has added as a part of that. But if you are new to Java, Java is one of the leading choices when it comes to developers who are writing programs all over the world. It is a language which is object oriented language. It is also class based and also it is following the write once run anywhere principle. You can write it once and you can run the executable or the final compiled state anywhere in the server. So in general people love Java for its concurrency when it compared with the Python which we saw earlier. It has also lots of libraries and it has a very good performance when it comes to the processing. Lots of enterprise companies use Java because of the support which the community provides which when it comes to enterprise grade. That is why lots of Java fans have their support towards Java because you have a greater community you have a wider community than anything else. The next in the list is JavaScript. JavaScript is another language which is very popular among the web developers. If you are a web developer, I don't have to say about it. JavaScript is an object oriented and dynamic language and it is one of the core technologies in the internet right now. Any website you open, it will definitely have JavaScript in it. Nowadays, people are writing without JavaScript. However, JavaScript has transformed into a server-side programming language in the recent times with the introduction of Node.js. So JavaScript is also gaining popularity. So even though some people tend to think Java and JavaScript are same, they are not really the same. They are completely different languages. Java is not a dynamic language. JavaScript is a dynamic language. And JavaScript is mostly influenced with its own self-sustained schemes so it is not similar to java it is completely different from java javascript is seeing the rise in the recent times and is also included in the list of hottest web development trends in the year 2017 so definitely if you have not tried a, a javascript definitely do try it out try out any node.js application try creating a node.js application with server-side processing The next in the list is PHP. 
PHP is generally a server side and a general purpose language which is used for the web development. If you had seen lots of websites use PHP in the current world, there was a state when there were more than 90% of the websites designed using PHP in the entire world. So PHP is considered very easy to learn and it is often chosen by developers who just start off as a fresher. So when you want to design a website within few hours of just learning, then people start off with PHP because the language in itself is like a C language. You can easily write or learn stuff in PHP. That is why people use PHP and it is loved by people who just start off with programming in general. It also has lots of high quality solutions for the array of web problems and it also has lots of frameworks. That is why people use PHP because they can just get started in a matter of few hours or maybe minutes. The next in the list is Golang or Go as we call. Go is a language which was created by Google and it is an open source language. It is compiled and has lots of features such as garbage collection, memory safety and limited structural typing. Compared to C language, Golang is the most preferred language nowadays because of its flexibility. It is a really good choice if you are working with network applications and also with web servers. If you see the lots of latest containers are using the Golang because of the way the language has evolved in these last 10 years, maybe I think 7 years now, 7 or 8 years now. Go also behaves consistently across the platform and which is why it is a great deal when it comes to developers for writing server-side applications. The next in the list is Kotlin. Kotlin, if you have heard in the last year, has gained a lot of attraction from the Android developers and Google has announced Kotlin as its official language for creating Android applications because of the way the Kotlin language itself has evolved along with the community with which Android is developing. It is a statically typed programming language where you can use it on any JVM. If you are writing a JVM application, you can use Kotlin along with it. That is why Kotlin has been used inside the Android Studio. So if you know about Android Studio, Android Studio primarily supports Kotlin because the creator of IntelliJ created Kotlin. If you haven't had any hands-on on Kotlin, do try it out. I have done a couple of videos on Kotlin and its usage. It is pretty good. I like the feature of uh, not having a null pointer in the whole language, which is what I feel is good compared to what we have in other languages like Java or Groovy. Because it is a JVM language, you can do whatever you do in Java and Groovy. Along with that, it provides lots of flexibility in writing less code compared to Java. It is completely interoperable with Java because it runs on the JVM. So you can call Kotlin to Java, Java to Kotlin and stuff like that very easily in a normal fashion. Not like Java to C or C to Java call, right? If, if you know what I mean with the JNI. When we talk about Android, we need to talk about iOS as well, right? Swift is the language which is powering the iOS devices. It was created by Apple as a part of the iOS upgrade. Swift is a multi-paradigm, protocol-oriented, object-oriented, functional, imperative, and block-structured language. It is too much, right? That is what is powering the iOS or your iPhone. That is why it has so many features. If you had known about Objective-C, that was what iOS was using initially. However, in the recent times, Apple has switched to a new language called Swift, which they had created in 2014. It is completely static and strong, strongly inferenced. It can work on Linux, Darwin, or any language which you know, any, any platform which you know. If you are an iOS developer, you definitely know that you will be using Swift. But if you are not, know that iOS or the Apple platforms run using Swift applications. The next in the list is R. R, right? That is the language name, in fact. So, R is a language 
which is also a multi paradigm object oriented functional style procedural reflective and imperative language r is generally used by people who are working on statistics usually data miners for developing statistical softwares and for creating data analysis softwares r's popularity has increased in substantially in the recent years because of the way people are mining data if you know about the recent boom in the data mining industry where if you have lots of data with the latest technologies with the um, usage of big data and hadoop kind of systems data mining has gained lot of traction and languages like r are gaining more and more users nowadays r is generally a command line interface however there are recently graphical front lines which people are developing in order to support the language the next in the list is c language obviously everyone would have learned about the c language because that is the basic language which you start off with right c is generally an imperative or a structured language which was created for the multi purpose or the general purpose usage however people are not using it much compared to the other languages because it is just a basic language it lacks lots of features because it was created uh, i think 45 years ago right it is static language it is slightly weak it is nominal it is cross platform however it doesn't do whatever the other languages do currently however if you are a beginner you can start off with c because it provides the basic functionalities of how you create a program so as a part of c language you will learn lots of basics of how your thinking should be when you write a program the next in the list is groovy groovy is an object oriented programming language for the jvm however it is a dynamic language unlike java it has lots of features which are copied from python ruby perl or smalltalk that is why it is more powerful and it runs on the jvm in general groovy files are converted into the bytecode and they run on the jvm directly so groovy uses java like curly braces and the syntaxes so you should be familiar with groovy when you already know java if you know java or kotlin you probably know groovy as well because it is almost similar however it is a dynamic language you don't have to do casting or type casting every time and it is object oriented obviously because it's a jvm language and it was founded 14 years ago uh, i am interested in adding groovy to this list because i feel that the jenkins pipeline already uses groovy so when you come to the devops world of automation and automating stuff using the jenkins pipeline you will have to learn groovy so that is why i i added groovy there are other languages or uh, which are more or better than groovy however groovy is useful when you are writing pipelines in jenkins and you need to learn groovy if you want to write pipelines when you are using jenkins and it is a jvm language so it will be very easy for you to learn when you already know java if you already know java you know a little bit of groovy you know a little bit of kotlin so if you learn these languages little bit they will give new features from other languages like python or ruby or perl if you know them personally like python separately then you might be able to easily guess the features of groovy which are incorporated from the python so right so those are the different languages which i wanted to just put it down here which i am looking forward to know in 2018 I know most of them however there are languages like python or even the go which i have no clue on which i wanted to learn in 2018 what do you want to learn in 2018 do let me know in the comment section below i'll try to make videos on that if i know if i don't know i will try to learn along with you that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video thank you very much